This is a tutorial on the Smart Notebook toolbar uh, in the Smart Notebook software. So let me just show you uh, the toolbar. And once you open Smart Notebook, this is just, I'm just going to go through a review of, of the different tabs in the toolbar. You have the arrows, which go forward and backward through your presentation. So um, you can go forward and backward, and I'll show you that in a second. This is add a page. So let's say I want to add a page to my presentation. Now you see I can go forward and backward. So if I had something on this page, you would see that. And we'll go through that in just a minute. This is um, open a file. So if you click on that, what it's going to do is it's just going to take you to files that you have saved. So you can just open a file if you already have a presentation. The disk is to save, so if you click on this, it'll ask you to name your smart notebook, and we'll call this one practice. And then you just tell it where you want it to go. Mine's going to the desktop, and I'm just going to hit save, and now it's saved my file. This is the um, paste button, so if I copy something, I can paste it. You have undo, which is my favorite button, and redo. Um, so if you have something that's in there, you can undo and redo. This is delete. And then this is your screen shade. So if you click on your screen shade, now, now you've got things shaded. You'll see the hand comes up. If you put your hand over the little dots, you can drag it down, the screen shade. You can drag it over. If you click the little red X in the upper right-hand corner, it'll take the shade away. This button is full screen. So if you click on it, now it becomes full screen, and you can navigate using those arrows. Um, these little dots are for more options. So these are the tools. If you want a pen, you can click on one of the pens, and you could draw from here. And you could also click in, if you wanted to type text, you could click somewhere and start typing the text. This button right here means you want to go back to the screen with the toolbar, so you can click on that. And this button is just going to show you the toolbar options. So now I've got some options I can look at if I want to see them. So this is just like a, a toolbar for this screen. Um, if I want to go back to the screen with all the toolbars and tabs, I click on that. So this this is the um, the screen with the full screen option. It kind of looks like a TV. You have the next one, which this is dual screen, and if you actually just take your mouse and drag it over the picture, you'll see it comes up on the bottom and tells you what you're going to be clicking on. So if I click dual screen, you can see now I have two pages, and I can look at both pages simultaneously, and if I don't want to anymore, I can click back on this dual page, and it takes me back to a single page. This is the capture button, the camera. And this allows you to take pictures of different things. So if I want to, I can move this over. And let's see. I can click Capture to a New Page, or I can just uncheck that button. And now it's going to put it on this page. The first one I can click on, I'm going to draw a box around what I want to capture. And I let go. And when I let go, you can see the box appears. So that's the capture button. I just took a picture and it captured it. And that's from that page. And then what I can do is I can just click on this box. And now it's like a piece of clip art. Let's click up here first. And now I can move this box that I captured and I can resize it and manipulate it. So that was the capture button. The second one is if I wanted to capture an entire uh, page. Um, this one, like an internet page, this one is if I want to capture um, everything on the screen. And this one is if I want to draw a circle or do something that's a shape that's not a box. If, and if I want to capture to a new page, I just check that box. So that's a review of the capture button. This button is if you have a, a document camera, and it's for the document cameras that are related to smart. So we don't have many, if any, of those, so we just skip that tool. This is the table drawing tool, and if you click on it, it gives you the boxes, and you can highlight. So if I want two columns, and I want eight boxes, I click there. And now I have my box here. This is my table. And moving the table is a bit tricky. If you click on it and drag and highlight, 
then you'll see this box come up, this gray box, and that allows you to move the table. So all I did was I left clicked, dragged and highlighted, and then I got that gray box, and now I've got the arrows there. I can move my table if I want to, and we're going to get rid of that. Um, we're going to delete what's behind it. Keeps catching it. There we go. Whoops. Hang on. We're going to undo that. See, you got the writing behind the table too, unfortunately, um, because my writing's back there. So we're going to move that over so we can mess with the table a little bit. So I'm all I'm doing is left clicking, highlighting my table, and this is going to allow me to move the table. And if I click on this arrow right here, it's going to give me all the different kinds of things I can do with a table. But here's a neat one. If I click Add Table Shade, now the table has different shades. And when I click on the shade, it's going to reveal whatever information I wanted to put into my table. Also, the cool thing about a table is if you want words or writing to go in the table, you can click in the table and type in it. And then now it's in the table. Or you can drag, if I want to drag this word high into the table, you see it becomes blue and I let go and now my word is in the table. If I want to take this scribble over here and put it in the table, I'm just going to drag it. And you can see it turns blue with the different cells, so if I want it in this cell I can let go and it resizes it to fit in the table. And you can do that with shapes or writing or pictures, different things like that. So. That was the table, and if I again, if I want to move the table, I'm going to left click and highlight over the table, and you can see now I get this little gray box, and that allows me to move it. I can also come down here to the corner and make it smaller if I want to. So that's a good way of doing that with the table. This little arrow is probably the most important thing on the toolbar, and this just gives you the choice of selecting options. For example, let me show you what happens if I start typing. So I'm just going to click on my page and I'm going to start typing. And now I'm typing. If I want to go back and I want to pick a shape, if I click on this arrow, now I'm not typing anymore, I can click on other items in the toolbar. So if you ever get to a place where you're wondering why you keep drawing shapes, and I'll skip and show you shapes for a second. I'm going to keep drawing circles no matter what I'm trying to do until I go back up and click the arrow. So if you're doing shapes or typing something and you can't stop drawing shapes or you can't stop typing, make sure you go up and click the arrow because that's giving you the power to select. This is just another way to get to the pens. If you click on the pens, you have highlighters. Uh, you can use this tool if you want the students to draw with their finger. Instead of picking up a pen, they can come up and hit the pen and pick a color, and then now the pen is, is acting as though it's uh, their finger or whatever you're writing with. So that's the pen. Here's the special pens. These are just the colorful pens. You can pick one and draw with that if you would like to have a little bit of variety. Ooh, that was terrible. And erasing. These are the different kinds of erasers and the creative pens. Uh, are next to it, but you've got the erasers here. And one neat trick with the eraser is if you pick up the eraser from the board, and it's a little bit hard to, to see me picking it up right now because I'm doing it on my computer, and then you're going to draw a fluent circle. We'll see if I drew a fluent circle. And then tap in the middle, everything inside the circle disappears. So that's kind of a neat trick. So if I pick a point and I draw a circle around what I want to erase, and then I tap in the middle, the whole picture will disappear. So that's an erasing trick. This is the line tool and it just, you pick a line and you click and drag and it drags from one point to another. It's a neat way to draw a line. And these are all the shapes. We may even have some more shapes if we get the next version. And you just click on a shape and you will draw that shape continuously until you come back up and click on this arrow key which we talked about before. To change the color of the shape, you can click on the shape and there are a couple of different ways to do this, but if you click on the shape, you can click on the gray arrow and go to properties. And you can go to fill effects. And you can go to solid fill and make it a color. You can go to gradient fill and make it two colors if you want to get extra fancy. You can go to the pattern fill 
and you can make it all different kinds of patterns and you can pick a foreground color and say okay and now it's pink and you can pick a background color and say okay and now it's pink and purple if you want to put in a picture you can click on image fill and click browse and then you can select a picture and I'm just going to pick a picture and I'm going to say open and now inside my shape is this picture and if you drag it bigger you can see more of the picture so that's how you add color to the shapes you can also click on the shape and come over here to the property tab and click on it and do it this way also we're going to come back and talk about this tab in a few minutes. Here is the shape recognition pen, and it's a little bit tricky for me to do on the computer and not on the smart board, but I'll give you a demonstration. The shape recognition pen, what it does is if you draw a shape, it will recognize the shape and make it linear. So if I draw a triangle, that's a, a little lopsided there, but it will make it more linear. So let's see what happens if I draw a circle. It makes it a perfect oval or circle. So the good thing about this is that the students do not have to draw a perfect shape because it will translate it. One tip though is it does have to be a completely closed shape because if it's not closed, it'll close it. And sometimes that one did fairly well, but oftentimes if you don't close the shape, it may or may not make a good shape. So just make sure they try to close it or get it as closely as they can. That's the shape recognition pen. My favorite pen is the magic pen, and it does three different things. If you click on the magic pen, the first thing that it does is it has writing that disappears. So if I draw with the magic pen and leave it for a few seconds, you'll notice that smiley face up there will eventually disappear and you can see it disappearing. So it's fun for Halloween or just for fun tricks. That's one thing it does. The second thing it does is it creates a spotlight if I draw a circle. So I'm going to draw a circle. Oh, that was terrible. I need to draw a better circle here. If I draw a circle, now it becomes a spotlight. And I can drag the spotlight over different items and it will demonstrate or show what I want it to show. And you can make the spotlight bigger or smaller by dragging out. Or you can close the spotlight by clicking the X. And that's still the magic pen. I just drew a circle and it became a spotlight. The third thing that the, sh that the magic pen does is if I draw a rectangle, we'll see how well I do with this rectangle here. Ooh. It will magnify and you can drag it over different things on your paper or on your uh, smart board and it will magnify and you can see the different things close up and you click the red X to make it go away so the magic pen does three things it does the disappearing if you just write with it it does the spotlight if you draw a circle and it does the um, magnifying glass if you draw a square or rectangle this is the paint can and if you click on the paint can you'll get the colors so you can pick a color you want and you can just go right to a shape and click on it and it will fill that shape with the color you picked. So this is